Good day, everybody. I want to welcome you to another episode of my channel. Uh, before I get into today's subject, which this video is only going to be covering one subject, I want to encourage you to go down into the description and find the link where I started a buy me a coffee. I've changed it a little bit, though. It's, it still says buy me a coffee, but when you go there, I actually put it as buy me a seat, you know, and I changed the logo to an owl because as you may or may not be aware, a large collection of owls is called a parliament. And so buy me a seat. I'm very funny. In my head, I'm hilarious. Okay, so let's get into this topic because I know that it's on everybody's lips and I want to import to you the, the distinctions that are not necessarily being discussed in, in all of the hoopla of the, you know, the right versus wrong and the left versus the right and all of the rest of that that's going on right now. So what we have here is a, is a ruling handed down from a Judge Mosley, who's a federal judge, when a, 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 a constitutional challenge was brought before him by a, bunch, by a large group of people. Some of them were nurses. Some of them were from a group called the CCF, which is the Canadian Constitution Foundation, and the CCLA, which is the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. So those two are important because they were the actual, their complaint were the, was, was the only two parties that the judge recognized they had a validity in their complaint. And they brought a validity before the judge on behalf of the Canadian people. And the judge didn't award them any money. So if you want to make donations to those, I don't know any of them from, from a hole in the ground, but I know that their lawyers would have cost money for this. And what they've done is make it a great strides for the freedom of and democracy of Canada. So I'm just pointing it out. It's the CCLA and the CCF. They both have YouTube channels. I will uh, dive back into the what's important now the meat of this particular ruling. So the idea was that they could, the liberal government could invoke um, the Emergencies Act and by doing so, suspend your rights and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Now in Canada, we don't have many of the things that you hear about on our TV because those are related to America. What we do have though, it's called the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and it, it has a whole host of rules in it. Um, there are copies of it that you, you can buy online. You can download a PDF. And it was only brought in in like the 60s by uh, John Diefenbaker, who was a Saskatchewan fellow, if I remember right. Now, Article 1 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is, is important because what it says is, guarantees the right and freedom set out in it subjected only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. That's exactly the quote word for word. What that means is if you have a problem, if you think that there's a reason that we have to say in, invoke the emergencies act, as that's article one of the of the charter of rights and freedoms you now can suspend the rest of the charter of rights and freedoms if it can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society so by invoking the emergencies act the argument goes they you are now stripped of any right you have no rights. You have none. Your rights are now limited to whatever the mood is of the, in this case, the federal liberals and the federal NDP. They decided that they were going to do these, this, they were going to invoke this. And I don't care if Jagmeet says that he was, uh, you know, he did it with reservations. He did it. And there's no, you know, you don't halfway break a law. You, you, you violated the Canadian people's rights. And that's all there is to it. This judge has handed that down. And I'll get to this idea of an appeal in a moment. Let me stay on what the finding was. Now, section two of the, of is important as a Canadian, you should memorize it by heart. 
<clears throat> of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms has four parts in it. Now it's called 2A, B, C, and D. Article C says that you have the freedom of peaceful assembly, and Article D says you have a freedom of association. So those were brought into question by the CCLA and the CCF, that because Article 1 wasn't met, Article 2C was violated. And their argument here was that there was not a justifiable reason to invoke the Emergencies Act and by extension suspend the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which then allowed for the police to break up and, and arrest and charge and attack people for just buying, like there was a two women, single mothers on assistance in our, uh, British Columbia who bought I Support the Trucker t-shirts and Christia Freeland seized their bank account. So that kind of is not really cool, right? Like to say that because you bought a t-shirt off their website, somehow you're, you know, all of your money should be seized. Like you're some sort of pimp or, you know, you're a, an international arms smuggler or you're some sort of like, I mean, think of the trouble they would have gone through to keep their children fed until the government decided that they were being unreasonable. That's just, that's the kind of hysteria that can happen when you, when you overreact, when you get to the point where you can no longer, I mean, at no point did any of the liberals come out and just say, Hey, come in here. We got a bunch of tables. Let's sit down and hammer this out. No, 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 no. Because these divisive, excuse me, these tying together liberals wouldn't talk to anybody. They won't talk to anybody that doesn't agree with them, even in the house of Parliament, in the house of commons. I can't think of how many times they've stood up and said, I won't take any advice from these conservatives. They want to draw lines. They want to draw drop wedges. They want to smash anything that looks like harmony because then when people have harmony, they will look up and see that there's nothing to fear. And really what they want is a quality of living. But let's not forget that the liberals hid and, and refused to speak to these truck drivers or any of their representatives. And they just sat in the House of Commons and then invoked the Emergencies Act. I thought for a minute they were gonna completely dispel, dismiss Parliament. That's the kind of power that was given to these individuals that clearly could not handle it because they sent in the police to grab gas cans. They sent in the police to seize your bank account for buying a t-shirt. They sent in the police to tow your trucks away. Now, this is important, that bank account seizure and this property seizure of gas, gas accounts that these police officers perpetuated illegally, right? This is what matters now. Now we can see that the federal government used the police against its people in an illegal action. So if you come to the next segment, right? So two is by itself, it's called fundamental freedoms. And the next one is called democratic rights. And that covers three to five. And then there's mobility rights, which covers um, six. Now, this is important because, oh, I'm sorry. It's the next one, legal rights. It covers um, seven right through to, it looks like 11. However, Number eight of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which I again recommend that you download and have a look at and have a copy of in your computer at all times. Everyone has the right to be secure against unreasonable search and seizure. Now, again, on the one hand, the liberals are going to say to you, no, 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 because we invoke the Emergencies Act. So there's no part of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms that we have to uh, respect because of rule number one which I think as Canadians, we need to take a strong look at why we allow rule number one to exist. Why there is any circumstance, why the government of our country thinks that our rights should be suspended. Any circumstance at all, under any condition that we should not have our civil liberties. I mean, you have rights if you are arrested for crimes. But all of a sudden, my government can tell me that I don't have rights because I stood out in front of parliament and honked a horn on a truck or, you know, whatever they did. Like, I wasn't there, but I was watching. I was keeping my eye on it. I, I agree with 
the finding that it was un, um, that it was against the law. I agree with the idea that the liberal government should have done something to be politicians. I mean, they are always telling you how they're trying to hammer out deals. They will fly to Switzerland to talk to people about hammering out deals, yet they won't walk out into parliament and talk to a bunch of guys in trucks. They won't say, you know what, we got a boardroom right over here with 95 RCMP officers to keep us safe. So don't you worry. We're going to come on in, have a cup of coffee. Let's hammer this out. Nope, because they were too obstinate because they decided that they were the smartest ones in the room. They've destroyed the economy. They locked down the cult, the country, right? Let's not forget that this was because they were not letting free commerce flow. It's, it's telling that they'll say to you, no, no, as a, as a middle, um, as a small business owner, you have to pay us back our loans. But Walmart never had to borrow any money because Walmart wasn't forced to close. So the corporation that is seized them in Switzerland didn't have to close, but Bob and Joe and, and Mary and, you know, Ahmed and Mohammed and other name Lili that I can't think of different cultures, but because Toronto has them all or Canada has them all would have been affected by this. How many times did we hear about the police barring up doors to, to taverns? How many, how many times have we heard about the, the priest getting arrested because he, he, he tried to give a sermon? I mean, the, the extent of this um, economic damage, they're still trying to say, well, it wasn't all our fault, but you didn't have to lock the country down. You chose to lock the country down selectively. You tried to say that some businesses couldn't be open and those exact same businesses, if they, if they had enough money, could stay open like Walmart, Canadian Tire, grocery stores, things of that nature. That contradiction is what set the truck drivers off trying to say to you that you as a as a politician can travel the country freely and get a haircut and do all these things whereas regular bob and joe gotta stay inside their house now the truck drivers want to come across the, the border and you're like no no if you want to come across the border you got to get a vaccine and they said no we don't want one thank you very much and that triggered this right because the federal government decided that the single largest industry in the world logistics should be shut down and controlled. And then they say to you, oh no, we have supply chain issues. Really, what a shock. What an, uh, it's astounding to me that you didn't see it coming. And then you had some little puppet come up in the low level Ontario judge and say, oh no, everything was fine. But this, these two groups, now there were other groups on this lawsuit, but they, it was not called a lawsuit, it's called a challenge. Um, they, were not recognized. Like there was a nurses organization. The the judge said that they don't have the right to uh, complain under these particular, under the, the wording. It's the wording that I'm trying to talk to you about right now. It's the wording that matters, right? Because the judge decided because there was no fairness in exercising the um, Emergencies Act, then you had no right to suspend number one, which then means you violated 2C, and you violated eight. I mean, that's what I, the ruling is 196 pages. I read a lot of it. I'm not going to bore you with the legalese of it. I'm not going to bore you with everybody's submissions. I will tell you that that is what it said in his conclusion. That where the, where the violations came down was that there wasn't a justified evocation of the Emergencies Act, which resulted in a violation of your civil rights, your charter rights, which we call them in Canada. Now, with the charter rights being violated, is a serious issue. We now have a federal government that uses the arm, its military to violate the civil rights, the charter rights of Canadian people, of its voted population, of its voting, excuse me, population. And anywhere else in the world, we would call that tyranny. Anywhere else in the world, we would call that fascism. But all of a sudden, we have the CBC and the CTV trying to downplay it, which we would also call names. When, when the press is in the pocket of the government, we have names for those cultures too. And they, they sound remarkably similar to the ones that I've just said. And I say that to you as Canadians because you need to understand that if we don't tell them enough is enough, they won't stop. They obviously do not have the skills the diplomacy required to rule a diverse country. 
They clearly are not qualified. They clearly didn't think that any of their legal degrees or their drama training was enough that they would have to speak to somebody at on their own level. They just decided that these guys drive trucks and are, are therefore beneath them. And when they wouldn't do as they were told, they didn't try to hammer out a deal. They didn't try to meet them halfway. They just refused at all to be reasonable. They refused at all. And when it went too far, when the other side also refused, then they became the biggest bullies in the North, in the history of North America. And they invoked the Emergencies Act. And I secretly think that perhaps Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act because Justin uh, Pierre Trudeau had to invoke the Emergencies Act in the, for the FLA crisis. But I don't know that. I do know that there was a lot of bombs going off at that time, and that seemed like a reasonable response to it. There was, you know, Canada was, there was the explosions happening and people were getting abducted. By contrast, the truckers were having barbecues and flirting with each other and waving Canadian flags. And the worst thing that you can say that they did was make some noise with their horns on their trucks. I've talked, I've listened, I've learned, I, I understand both sides of the argument. Everybody says the only, the same thing all the time, right? That, that all of a sudden it just got noisy and they couldn't park. But the, I don't feel that the federal liberals looked at it like that. I think that they looked at it as some sort of insult to their you know, to their standing in the country. I think that because they, they, they come, they sit on a certain spectrum because they sit on a certain part of the political spectrum that they can't handle anybody disagreeing with them, that they're not capable of withstanding that they're not their Their personality is such that if you disagree with them in any way, shape or form, they have no, no recourse to, to negotiate that. And so they just went to the extreme. They just said, let me turn the army against them. That's how they treated people who parked their car and wouldn't and refused their, their truck and refused to move it in the dead of winter. I mean, th th this wasn't even really affecting uh, tourism. And they're going to, they stand up and they say, oh no, we're going to appeal. First of all, I want you all to hear me on this. It's not television. You can't just say, I'm going to appeal because I didn't like the ruling. If you want to appeal, you have to have a reason to appeal. You have to say to them, this, my, one of my rights, which is ironic, one of my rights was violated or one of my, you know, not necessarily my charter rights, but one of the legalese rights, right? Because there's procedures that you got to follow when you're doing lawyer stuff and when you're, the judge has got to keep his eye on it or her eye on it or whatever. In this case, it's he, he's got to watch it and there's, you know, did the right thing get said? Was paper not turned in at the right time? This kind of stuff can can trigger um, an appeal. But the idea that you can say, well, we don't like the outcome, so we're going to appeal, that is very difficult. That is not something that you, it's not television. You can't just say we're going to appeal it. You got to have reasons. You got to ha have reasons that not only were you, were your, were you, um, were your rights violated, but that the judge knowingly did it. That's going to be a very difficult thing to prove. This is not a joke. This is a federal judge who specializes in this kind of stuff. I mean, he, he, he's going to have ticked all his boxes. He's going to have watched what he was doing. He even says that in the beginning of it, he was, he was leaning heavily. Like if, when you, if you would have asked him at the time, he would have thought that it was fine. And then he listened to the arguments and he had a look at the evidence and then he realized that's in his 200 pages. So this first of all says great things to a man being neutral and just sticking to the letter of the law. Right. And I'm fairly certain that because he stuck to that letter of the law, he's probably going to have stuck to all of the letters of the law. Now I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know that they're not going to be successful in, in achieving an appeal. And I'm certain that they will launch an appeal. Will that appeal be heard? Will that appeal be accepted? I don't know The the um, Canadian court of appeals turns down things all the time because of the reasons that I just mentioned, that the, some, that the biggest primary reason is that there was no violation in your rights. So the judges who, who handed that down were fine in handing it down. That's, that's just how that works. But it doesn't matter for this conversation that we're having. What matters is that, first of all, when they found out the news, Justin Trudeau didn't even want to come out and talk to the press. Why? Why did you send out three backbenchers with the deputy prime minister and a couple of others to try and talk about how there were, there might or may or may not have been this, that, and the other thing. 
like they were saying, oh, well, there was this and there was, you know, there was things found and all of this stuff. All of this stuff makes very little sense to me. However, I do think that the, what is telling in that is that the prime minister himself did not come out. <sighs> so during the trucker thing, you hid. And now when you find out that an actual, not a hand-picked judge by the federal government, by the liberal government, but a judge who was neutral and, and, and listened to the case, ruled against you, you have decided that you won't face the press that you give billions of dollars to every single year. Taxpayers' dollars. So how is that indicating to me that you don't a feel guilty and b can't handle the pressure and if you can't handle the pressure are you certain that you're the kind of man that's qualified to deal with the crisis if you can't handle the pressure of being told that you were incorrect and that the, somebody d disagreed with you should you not be maybe looking in the mirror and thinking to yourself hey wait a minute maybe i'm not cut out for this Maybe it's time for me to, to realize that I'm out of my depth. I'm not telling, you know, I'm not saying one way or the other, but I'm saying to you that if this were in any other situation where the person was in a, in a CEO or the person was the manager or the person was even just a normal everyday ordinary employee, there would be ramifications and repercussions that they would be facing for this breaking of the law. And now you want me to believe that because you don't agree with it, that means it's not right. Well, that's not true at all. That's th There's lots of rules out there that people don't agree with that they have to follow. There's lots of rulings. Plenty of them. I can think of, um, you know, 10 right off the top of my head that all have to do with traffic, driving. So there are lots of rules in this country that people don't want to agree with, but they have to follow them. And if they don't follow them, you as the federal government or maybe perhaps the provincial and municipal government will arrest them for it or give them a fine for it or punish them in some way, shape or form. Now, if you don't want to stick to the rules that you are supposed to be per, um, protecting, does that really make you a rule of law prime minister? I feel like you're just kind of picking and choosing. It looks like it, right? If I sit here in the center and I say to you, to myself, okay, um, the judge ruled against you and you didn't even come out to say something to the press. You sent someone else out. You sent out the deputy prime minister and a couple of other ministers. But you were the one officially responsible for the decision making. And so you're the one that should have come out and spoken to the press. That's my opinion. Now, maybe you have a different opinion and I encourage you to leave that opinion down in the comments. I think that as Canadians, we need to hold it to account all of the, we need to put in under the, under the microscope, give it scrutiny for all of the actions. I mean, here we're talking about a government that has been accused of mismanaging money on six or seven different occasions, has interfered with the RCMP uh, talking to cabinets or excuse me, to committees for, that are held by the, by the government. And, um, all of these problems are tied. They have one thing in common. They have one thing in common. And it, it, it's a red L with a Canadian maple leaf on it. They all have that in common. There's, the, there's Justin Trudeau and the federal liberals. And every one of these problems goes directly to this group of people who seem to be excellent to creating problems and not so good at solving problems and not so good. And this is the part that I get like, you, you know what people, people screw up. You make mistakes. You got all these, this, that, and the other thing. Great. But if you can't accept responsibility, if you can't take accountability for your own mistakes, then you are not, you don't have the greatest character of individual. Like you're, you're now moving into the realm of, of, of dishonorable. You have to accept your mistakes in order to fix them. If you can't see them, how do you know what to do? All right, I'm going to leave that one here. I probably went on a little bit longer than I wanted to, but it's, it's, it's a lot to unpack and the ripples and the, and the ramifications are important. If you've listened this long, I really appreciate it. Um, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends. 
I'll talk to you next time.